So exactly how are long-lived assets valued? There are three possible models for valuing long-lived assets under IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. The cost model, the revaluation model, and the fair value model. Let's start with the cost model. It's going to be the most familiar for all of you because it's what's taught in introductory financial accounting. Under the cost model, we record our long-lived assets at their original cost, less accumulated depreciation or amortization, and less accumulated impairment losses since the asset was first purchased. The sum is called either the net book value or the carrying value. Under the cost model, depreciation, which is what it's called for tangible assets, or amortization, which is the wording we use for intangible assets, is recorded annually when the asset has a limited life. Examples of tangible assets would be a building or equipment, and intangible assets would be, for instance, a patent. Note that long-lived assets with indefinite lives, such as land or trade names, are not depreciated or amortized. All long-lived assets, both with limited and unlimited lives, are tested for impairment and written down if their carrying value is greater than their recoverable amount. I'll expand on this concept in Chapter 10. The cost model is the most commonly used model for evaluating long-lived assets, which is no surprise given its simplicity. The drawback of this method is that it's unlikely to reflect the current or market value of the long-lived assets on the entity's financial statements. The next valuation method is the revaluation model. This method revalues certain long-lived assets to their current fair value, frequently enough that the fair value is reasonably current. The revaluation might occur annually, but it might not. It must be revalued whenever there has been a material change in the fair value. The revaluation model can be applied to property, plant and equipment, intangible assets which have an active resale market, and to the exploration and evaluation costs for mineral resources. Entities which choose not to use the revaluation model for these assets must instead use the cost model. If the revaluation model is used, these long-lived assets are reported at their net book value or carrying value, which is the revalued amount less the accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses, which is, of course, very similar to the cost model, but the base is the revalued amount. Note that between revaluations, depreciation or amortization is still recorded annually for those revalued long-lived assets which have a limited life and they are still tested for impairment whenever necessary. The revaluation model is rarely used in Canadian entities, but it might be adopted if the fair value is the most relevant value for the users of the financial statements. That's because the revaluation model always reflects the current value of the long-lived assets, which is a benefit for some entities who may wish to use their assets as collateral for things such as a loan. The last valuation method is the fair value model. Under this method, assets are revalued to fair value annually. The fair value model can be applied to investment properties. Entities which choose not to use the fair value model for their investment property must use the cost model. The fair value model has to be used for biological assets, except for bearer plants, such as, you know, apple trees, as long as the fair value is determinable. If the fair value model is used, all changes to the fair value are reported through the income statement, both gains and losses. In addition, Tests of impairment are not required because the assets are already revalued at fair value annually, so impairment tests are no longer required. The fair value model is used by Canadian companies because it's required for biological assets, although it's not as frequently used for investment property. Again, the decision to use the fair value model for investment property or not will depend on the needs of the users of the financial statements. This method always reflects the current value of the asset on the financial statements. 
That's a quick rundown of the methods to value long-lived assets. Note that we're going to cover the revaluation model and the fair value model in more depth in a subsequent learning objective.